Hello, people of the world watching car views on the internet. Welcome to this. The 2024 Lexus LC500H Bespoke Edition. A bespoke edition is essentially your ability to hand select the exact colors and options you want on your LC500. The way every new car should be when you're ordering one. Anyway, today I'm gonna get this thing up in the air. We're a nerd out in the tech specs, see how it's constructed, and then go give it the beans. Absolutely gorgeous. While I am hypercritical of an exhaust system not being attached to the finisher on the rear bumper, at least it's made out of metal. And because this is the hybrid model, there is really no need for a valved active exhaust. At least it's still made out of stainless though. Lots of aerodynamic paneling under these cars. The Lexus LC500 utilizes a multi-link rear suspension with a steel subframe, all of which is constructed out of aluminum, including the knuckle. There's also active rear steering available with a dynamic handling package, which this one doesn't have. And it's paired with a set of KYB Japan adaptive coilover dampers. What the hell? The rear anti sway bar is above the rear subframe. M imagine having to upgrade that. Fuck that. Oh man. It measures in at approximately 20 millimeters in diameter. Housed in the center of that rear end is the standard brake based torque vectoring differential with a 3.357 final drive ratio. Also fun fact for modifying LC 500s, you can swap the Torsen 3.357 differential from a hybrid into a V8 car to give you a shorter final drive ratio. The LC 500H or GWZ 100 for you chassis code nerds is based on Toyota Lexus's TNGA GAL platform and weighs in at a whopping 4,420 pounds, 180 pounds heavier than the V8 coupe. However, it has a slightly better 52 to 48 front to rear weight distribution than the V8. Just because it's a hybrid doesn't mean it has to have a boring exhaust. It actually has an H pipe in the center, dual resonators that straight out of Joe Dirt. Mid pipe diameter measures in at dual 55 millimeter diameter piping, which is approximately an aggravating fraction above two inches SAE. <laughs> I'll give it a pass. It's like a composite, almost like a fiber plastic board material. It actually has hinged plastic access doors, steel underbody brace. That's a rather impressive transmission mount, aluminum. It's honeycombed, super thick. It's a massive aluminum under engine panel with two little access points for maintenance. Aluminum front subframe, another metal pan under the engine, this one steel with a removal access panel for maintenance. As far as the transmission goes in these LC 500 H's is the Igene L310 hybrid planetary gear set automatic. It is comprised of two motor generators, the 2NM system, which produces up to 179 horsepower and 220 pound feet of torque for electrical propulsion. Those motor generators also are in charge of supplying electricity for the hybrid system and also acting as a starter for the vehicle. In addition to those dual motor generators, you also have three planetary gear sets within that longitudinal transmission that act as a sort of a CVT, which it's not a CVT, it's a planetary gear set, to further break up four traditional gears, giving you a wide range of up to 10 speeds. See the transmission pan for that Igene L310? Up front, the LC500 has a all aluminum in construction, double joint multi-link suspension, dual ball joints on the bottom as well as the top, but check this out, where the upper links are attached to the inside of the strut tower. And again, the base suspension package is these adaptive KYB coilover dampers. Front anti-sway bar measures in at that thing's as girthy as a kibasa. Jeez. 37 millimeter in diameter. That's enormous. All right, it's time for the braking test. No one behind me. This is, this is gonna be terrible. Oh my God. All right, ready, set. Go! Ooh, geez, okay! Very soft pedal input. Slammed on the brakes, barely even notice anything happening with your foot. It's nice and firm. Uh, the braking, the, the, 
now my brain feels like it's shaking in my head. <laughs> Stopping distance was was good, even for the weight. It, it hit me like 10 seconds after. My body is just like, what just happened? That braking was just made possible thanks to a six piston monoblock front caliper with a two piece 15.6 inch or 400 millimeter front rotor. The wheels, these are the optional 21 by eight and a half with a positive 25 millimeter offset wheels wrapped in a 245 40 21 inch Michelin Pilot Sport S5 tire. This little vent next to the LED DRL is functional. Uh, that's hairy cardboard. This whole entire side vent is all one giant tunnel inside here. The rears also hairy cardboard. Out back, you get a four piston monoblock caliper with a single piece 358 millimeter or 14.1 inch rear rotor. The wheels, they do get wider at 21 by nine and a half with a positive 25 millimeter offset wrapped in a 275 35 Michelin Pilot Sport S5 tire. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. But first, a bolstering assessment. Perfect. Absolutely superb bolstering in these gorgeous seats. It does have heated and ventilated seats, but there's only one button that you press and it brings up a sub menu for either ventilation or heat for either one of the seats or auto mode, which will be based on your climate control setting. As far as drive modes go, I have EV mode, which is for low speed use. Primarily golf clubs and country clubs and other places, neighborhoods that you have to talk to a doorman to let you through into them. <laughs> Additionally, I have the bullhorn up here by the gauge cluster that you can rotate all the way down for eco mode and then comfort press it for normal sport s and sport s plus and then over here on the left you can rotate it down for snow or press it for traction control off or press and hold to turn off stability control all right give this thing a little assistance and let it eat ready go all right it actually let me launch it the hybrid version is not slow, that's good. I keep forgetting that the hybrid versions of these cars is not slow. It's barely slower than the V8 version, at least on paper. Hood pop. Hood strut, that's a super light hood. Underneath the hood of the 2024 Lexus LC500H is the 8GR FXS, which is an all aluminum three and a half liter naturally aspirated V6 that produces on its own without the assistance of the hybrid drive system, 295 horsepower at 6,600 RPM and 258.2 pound feet of torque at 5,100 RPM. Now, in conjunction with 2NM, those series parallel hybrid electric motors in the transmission we talked about earlier, it has a combined system output of 354 horsepower. Let's move the engine cover, get a better look underneath here. There you go. It's got a plastic intake platinum, flops over one of the banks of cylinders and loops around to a plastic intake pipe, pretty simple. Also plastic valve covers. Well, that's weird. There's a coolant cap right here next to these hard pipes that go through the valley of the block. I wonder if that's for the EGR system. That's probably located in the valley of the block. That's, that's probably what it is. You can see the motor inverter for the hybrid system is mounted right here on the passenger side of the engine bay. In addition to the batteries being back there for the hybrid system, you can see why this has a better weight distribution than the V8 because this V6 is pretty much front midship in this car. Digging a little bit deeper on this 3456cc 4cam 24 valve V6, it has an over squared 94 by 83 millimeter bore and stroke with a 13 to one compression ratio paired with Atkinson cycle on demand and moving up to the cylinder heads. Now this thing has VVTi on exhaust cams. It's kind of normal for a Toyota engine, but it has VVTi W on the intake cams, which I didn't even know existed until I reviewed this thing. It stands for variable valve timing intelligent wide in reference to the range of motion adjustability for those intake cams. Well, let's take this beautiful machine for a rip. Do you notice the extra weight of the hybrid version? 
Well, the V8 version's definitely no lightweight to begin with. We're talking like Hellcat weight territory here. I mean, it is a heavy car, but trying to find some bumps to unsettle it? No. It doesn't feel porkish. I mean, you can, on a couple little jarring bumps, notice the weight of the car, but this car handles great. Without putting this thing on a racetrack, it's really hard to see if you can notice the little bit better weight balance that this has over the V8 version. It's um, only 2%, but still. The fact that this does not have the added performance package or the dynamic handling package and it still handles this good shows how capable this car is when you load it up with the performance goodies. And if you're gonna get the V8 version, I recommend doing the performance package and the dynamic handling package. The one thing I love about some modern performance cars, especially with the ZF8 speed transmissions, is when you grab a gear, you get that little overboost surge of torque on forced induction versions of it. And this doesn't have that. In fact, this has kind of the opposite. It has a little bit of a torque dip, like a torque management. When you upshift, just a, a slight hesitation and pause. And that's probably just because of the fact that the planetary gear sets are doing their robot things. There is a delay too when you tap the paddle, your brain has a chance to process that shift. So they're not the most engaging to use. They're, they're there, I guess, but you don't buy one of these cars though to set record lap times or to carve a canyon. You buy one of these cars to put miles on and enjoy and cruise and something that looks absolutely breathtaking and people will stare at every single place that you go with it. I mean, this car draws so much attention and as it should, it's absolutely beautiful. While it is missing the soundtrack of the V8, it does have the soundtrack of the Mark Levinson stereo in here. And I don't even know why that would be an option. You absolutely have to have the Mark Levinson. It looks like you could use the taillight as a mirror to see if you got some broccoli stuck in your teeth. I may, I'm not going to say whether I was doing that or not, but I might have actually been doing that just ate lunch. For this bespoke build, it's equipped with the active rear spoiler and the carbon fiber top. Good choices, I would say. The whole entire underside panel of the trunk is all forged carbon fiber. And in case you were wondering, I tested this over the weekend. A set of golf clubs actually does fit in this trunk. A little tire inflator strapped down, a first aid kit. Oh, there's the battery. Dude, even underneath the trunk area is painted super nice. It's not just like a mist of overspray. That's quality right there. A fuse box here, a fuse box over there. Open. The carbon fiber door sills are mattified down here, but gloss up by the Lexus logo. It's kind of nice contrast. The inside panels of the door are all in that forged carbon fiber as well. And the hardware actually has Lexus engraved into the head. You gotta wait a minute for the robots to do its thing. This is like the smallest floor mat I've ever seen. Here goes nothing. Huh? Even with these shoes on, I still have leg room. Is it speaker back here? The subwoofer for the Mark Levinson sound system is in the center of the two back seats. The center armrest cushion looks like the tongue of a fancy person's boat shoe. Yeah, if I was of a normal height, I would probably fit back here. I feel like if I owned this car, I'd have to vacuum my roof into triangles. That would bother me. I will criticize that the new infotainment screen is glossy and it's easy to see fingerprints on it, especially when the sun casts on the screen. I am sad that it lost this neat piece of glass over here that they had before with the old infotainment system. When the car is off, the climate control menu is all smoked out so you can't see it. Power on and then turns on the display. For 2024, they updated the infotainment system. Looks like many other Lexus and Toyota products. It is fairly idiot proof to use and has fruit and robot compatibility. I did find this little Easter egg though. If you press the camera view button that oddly looks like a weird coffee cup, it brings up the 360 degree camera system. However, you'll notice this is not a white LC500. I'm driving an ultrasonic blue one. So if you tap on the little gear icon, you'll notice it says vehicle body color. Okay. And it's even updated for 2024. It has ultrasonic blue, the copper crest, some nori green. So I'm going to select ultrasonic blue just as a test yeah there you go it's blue sadly lexus has been phasing this feature out in their newer models but this still has the robotic gauge cluster that physically moves over a dial which includes various other things like your rear wing position tire pressure gear position g-force meter you get a little plaque right here that says bespoke build there's a little cup holder inside there there's an additional cup holder 
hidden in the center right here in this thing, soft close. USB, USB-C. You can charge your cell phone in there. It doesn't have a wireless charge pad, but a spoiled journalist might complain that this sounds cheap. This is the biggest criticism of the LC500H that doesn't have the V8 soundtrack. That is the one thing that everyone is gonna knock this car for. And as they should, something that looks like this should have an amazing soundtrack as well. Also the fact that Toyota could have stuck the twin turbo 3.4 liter V6 with hybrid assist from the Tundra into this thing with some tweaks and changes for a car application and had even more power, but still the beauty of a hybrid. All reasonable complaints to have. However, this is a dated platform now. It's been out for quite a while. So that's why it doesn't have the option of the 3.4 liter twin turbo V6. And also the V8, while it is amazing, it is not a buzzkill to buy the hybrid version of this car. As much as it pains me to say that, it doesn't ruin this car to have the hybrid V6. When the hybrid version of this car first came out, it didn't make sense to me why anyone would choose this over the V8. But now after spending time in this thing, and especially considering what the purpose of this car is, it does make sense. And with the appeal of hybrid cars more so today than back when this first launched, it makes it a super appealing car. If you are somebody that is absolutely hell-bent on wanting to buy either an EV or a hybrid vehicle, and you don't need a ton of space and you have some cash to spend, this is an absolute no-brainer. The fuel economy in the LC500H is incredible. I've been averaging about 29 miles per gallon with this thing. You could probably average a little bit more depending on how you drive. Additionally, with the bespoke package, there are some pretty fun color choices that you can get on the LCs, especially the dark red interior. That one's by far probably my favorite. The fact that they did not make that many of these cars and that it's going to be getting phased out here fairly soon, I have a feeling that even though the value of these has dropped some, it's probably going to stabilize and eventually start going back up. I could see the V8 versions in the bespoke edition especially being worth a lot of money someday. It is now time to give this thing some scores. Starting with the bean score, the assessment of feeling you get in your gut. That was my boob <laughs> when you get the beans. And the LC500H gets a rating of. Next is the cookie score, the assessment of value. And as this bespoke edition is equipped at $113,000 and change, it gets a rating of. Next is the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance. And the hybrid version of the LC500 gets a rating of. Next is the squid score, the assessment of handling. And it earns a rating of. Lastly is the Penguin score, the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle, and the LC500H Bespoke gets a rating of... I can't say the hybrid version is bad. It's a great car. I just like the sound of the V8 better. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye!